to math. All right, imaginary numbers, what we're going to be working with today. So this is one of the easier, uh, today's lesson and Monday's lessons are, I think, some of the easier things, and there's some tips and tricks that I can show you with the calculator, but uh, they always put questions about complex numbers and imaginary numbers on the non-calculator portion, and then they put some on the calculator portion as well. So you got to know how to do this both ways uh, with that. So I'm going to show you both directions uh, with uh, the different things. We won't do as much calculator work today as we do, will Monday. Monday we'll do a good bit of graphic calculator stuff, uh, but today will be mostly uh, by hand with a little bit of assistance from the calculator, but not as much. So uh, imaginary numbers, uh, the whole idea of imaginary numbers came from a couple of guys, there's a couple of mathematicians that were, um, I guess you'd call them pen pals. I don't know if you guys are too young to know a pen, or I have a pen pal. Uh, but a pen pal is somebody you write letters to and mail them a snail mail letter and they get it, they read it, they respond and send it back. Uh, you guys live in the age of uh, social media and electronic messaging. And so your pen pals can be around the world and they can get a message from you. And 0.25 milliseconds. You know, it's just amazing. Uh, but back in olden times, there were a couple of mathematicians that were uh, basically trying to challenge each other. Uh, it was a nice little mathematical contest between the two of them. And they would come up with uh, polynomials is what they were studying. They were both students, uh, but they were studying under different teachers. And they, but they knew each other, and they would write letters back and forth to each other, uh, and kind of challenging each other with questions about, can you solve this problem? And write a problem out there. You know, they they challenge the other person to solve it, and then that guy would solve that equation, you know, and send his answers and a new question back to the other guy. And they ended up getting to this point where they both understood that whatever the exponent was in the problem, the highest exponent on the variable, that's how many answers you should have. But they realized that there were some of them that they couldn't get all the answers to. They knew if it had x squared in it, it should have two answers. And we've seen that as we've been doing quadratics last week, um, that every time we do factoring, we get two answers. Every time we did square roots, we got two answers because that plus or minus stuff. So all that stuff, uh, they, they knew this and they, they understood that idea of it. But they didn't know how to find some of the answers because they, they had all these techniques about solving by square roots and solving by factoring. Uh, but they did, and they they even came up with quadratic formula, but they didn't know what to do uh, when certain things happened. And so they would say, "Well, I know that there are uh, two solutions to this quadratic, uh, but I can't find them. They we'll just call them imaginary solutions, but we know there are two of them." So that's where the name came from. Imaginary is not what they are. They're complex numbers. Uh, imaginary is kind of a bad uh, naming accident with that. So uh, imaginary numbers implies that they don't exist. Um, you know this or not, but unicorns are imaginary. Uh, I heard say this, but, uh, so they're imaginary figures. Uh, imaginary numbers are not numbers that don't exist. They're numbers that don't show up on the coordinate plane or on the real number system coordinate plane. The normal, the normal coordinate plane with the X and Y axis are only the real number system. We're getting into the complex number system. So this is taking the same tools that we used uh, earlier in the week with solving by square roots, and we're going to imply get into the complex number system with this, which is a, an extension of what you did in algebra one. Algebra one, you only dealt with uh, real number answers, uh, and with algebra two, we get into this complex number system, and the beginnings of that is the imaginary numbers. Uh, so let's let's get into these things. So imaginary numbers um, were such as x squared uh, equations, like I was talking about with those two guys doing pin uh, Equations x squared plus one is equal to zero. Uh, they have don't have a real solution, so you can't factor that and solve it. If you move the one over to the right side to do square roots, you got a negative under there. And in algebra one, when we got a negative underneath the square root, we just said there's no solution out of that or no real solution. Uh, we didn't get into the imaginary number. So we're going to get into that imaginary number system. Uh, the imaginary unit, I, so lowercase i. In the past, when we've been doing some uh, word problems and stuff, I told you don't use the letter I as a variable. This is why. 
because I has a meaning in math classes. Uh, the I, lowercase i is defined as i equals the square root of negative 1. Okay, so the square root of negative 1 is the definition of what i stands for. Okay, so it's just kind of shorthand notation for that, that, that anytime we have a square root with a negative in it, then the i is going to be involved. Uh, and then the pure imaginary number is written in this form. B I, where B is the real number and I is the imaginary. Okay, so it's B times I is what the math is going on there. So when we look at those numbers, it's B times I. So all of that, just nice little uh, knowledge things. But the idea that we're going to get into is actually taking some square roots that have negatives on the inside and incorporating that complex number system into it. So uh, the square root of negative 9, if the negative wasn't there, we just covered up the negative, and it was just square root of 9, what's the answer? 3. Because it has the negative in there, all we've got to add to it is an i. So that's just 3i. That's why I say this is probably one of the easier lessons of the semester, and it's thrown in here uh, right, right in the middle of everything. So... Uh, so the negative, anytime there's a negative under a square root, we know an I is going to come out when we go to simplify. So if you do the factor tree simplification, if there's a negative under there, you just know that I is going to come out. Okay. On number two, 196 negative on the inside of the square root. What do we know 196 is? It's 14 squared. So this would be 14 I. And that's just one of those that I happen to have memorized. If you don't have it memorized and you do the factor tree stuff, just ignore the negative no, negative sign and do the factor tree for 196. I know 2 goes into that. Uh, 9 and 98 times. And then that's uh, 2 and 49. And that's 7 and 7. So there's a pair of 7 and a pair of 2s. 7 times 2 is 14. So if, if you didn't have that memorized that 196 is 14 squared, uh, you can do it with factories. But because it had the negative, the I is on there too. That's all you got to remember. Uh, number three, does five break down in the square root? No, it's a prime number. So the only thing that can come out is the I. So it's going to be I square root of five. So it would simplify a little bit because the negative that was in there, an I comes out, but no number. Okay. Let's look at number four, the square root of negative 80. So I'm going to break down 80, uh, 20 and 4. 4 is 2 and 2. 20 is 5 and 4. 2 and 2. So there's one, two pairs of twos. And what else on the outside? Five goes back on the inside because it didn't have a buddy. What else comes out here with that? An I because the 80 was what kind on the inside? Negative. It was negative. So that's going to be 4I radical 5 is our final answer because you multiply everything together that's on the outside, multiply. So it's the same thing we've been doing, just adding the I part to it, which only happens if there's a negative there. Uh, so number five, 32, let's break it down. Eight and four, four and two, two and two, two and two. So we've got one, two pairs of twos. And what else on the outside? An I, what's left on the inside? A 2. So that's going to be 4i radical 2. Okay. A little bit more interesting uh, number 192 underneath the square root. 192. I don't know much about 192 other than it's even. So I'm going to break it down that way. Two, nine, and 
one left over, so 96, and 96 breaks down to, uh, let's see, that'd be 8 times 12, isn't it? 4 and 2, 2 and 2, 2 and 6, 2 and 3. A lot of 2s there, but we're just going to pair them up. So I got one pair, two pair, three pairs of twos, and then a three left over. Radical three, good. So that'd be eight I radical three. And again, your graphing calculator cannot handle doing square roots, uh, simplifying them. It can get the decimal equivalent to that, but it can't get the uh, the <clears throat> simplified version. Uh, on your graphing calculator, if you've got that handy, uh, get that out and turn it on. I want to show you a little bit of a, a maybe a checking thing that you can do with this, uh, and and then we'll get into solving some equations with this, and it'll take us long to finish up today. All right. Um, so with the graphing calculator, you've got to be in the right mode with that calculator to make it. Uh, do the right things you want. So uh, let's set that mode. So hit the mode button. And then you're looking for the, uh, should be down toward the bottom. Uh, yeah, hit mode. Uh, and we're looking for that line that says real, A plus B I, and then R E to the I, theta I. We want to, mine was set to real already. I want to set it to a plus B I because that's complex numbers and that'll let it do some things with complex numbers. So I'm going to hit enter right there. So you're looking for that line on your calculator. When you hit mode, look for that and try and darken in the A plus B I option. The R uh, E to the theta I, that's a whole, that's a calculus type thing that you could use later on if you go into engineering or something. Uh, but A plus B I is the, the mode we want that in. Okay. Now, when we do that, what that will allow us to do is if I type in the square root of negative 192, it will crank out a decimal version of that and put the I on it. I don't think we need the calculator to remind us that an I is there. We should know that already anyway. But if I'm trying to check and make sure I did this right, if I typed in 8, and then to get the I, I hit second decimal point, and it'll put that I there. And your calculator has that pre-stored is, oh, they mean complex number, is what it says. And then square root of, what was it, three? We hit enter there, we'll notice that they are the same number. It works out there. Your calculator can help you kind of check to make sure that's right. Uh, I don't know how handy that is. Uh, but knowing where to get the I part is going to be handy on Monday when we do that stuff. So I hit second, and then the decimal point down at the bottom will get you the I. Got it? All right. And I don't know how handy that is for today's lesson, but it's going to be real handy on Monday when we start doing some operations, complex numbers. I'll show you the calculator. You can do a lot of stuff with that. So let's get into kind of combining this with what we've already been working on. Uh, this week with solving by square roots. That's what we're going to be doing. It's just going to add in some negative numbers to doing that. So when we look at number seven there, x squared plus 81 is equal to zero. If I'm going to solve that by square roots, what do I need to do first? Subtract 81. So minus 81. That's going to be x squared is equal to negative 81. Now I can take the square root of both sides, plus or minus on the number side, and what's the square root of negative 81? Be 9i plus or minus in front of that. That's two solutions. Positive 9i and negative 9i are solutions to that equation. Okay. There's two answers to that. Now, let's look at number eight. A little bit more complex problem, uh, but still the same idea. What's the first step? Are two different answers. Can't do both of them. I need to move the nine, right? Because I want to get like terms together before I do any kind of division or multiplication. So I'm going to subtract nine. That's going to be negative eight. 
Now I can do that division by 2. And that's going to be negative 4. And take the square roots of both sides. What's x? Not 4i. 2i. Square root of 4 is 2. 2i. Not too bad. Pretty easy, right? Number 9. First step. Yeah, subtract 15 this time. 4x squared equals negative 24. All right, so I'm going to divide by 4 and get x squared is equal to negative 6. What do I do now? Square root of both sides, right? What's the only thing that comes out of the square root of negative 6? But it breaks down to 3 and 2, but there's not any pairs to that, right? So it, nothing comes out. And Brooklyn, you're right. I is the only thing that comes out. 6 stays inside. Because there are no pairs to that. So because it's negative, an I comes out. And because there are no pairs on the factor tree, the 6 stays in. We just multiply them back together. Okay. About number 10. Minus 13, good job. Negative 12. Square roots, plus or minus on the number side. And 12 breaks down. 2 and 6, 2 and 3. There's a pair of 2s. Yeah, 2i with a 3 on the inside. Good job, buddy. Questions about those so far? Doesn't get much more complex than this. Let's go ahead and do 11 and 12. Uh, add 5 because they're subtracting it already. So I'm going to add 5 to that. So be careful. So negative 441. One negative one four seven. Okay, good. Square roots. Boom. Yeah, I'm gonna do the factor tree for one forty seven. Uh, one plus four plus seven is twelve, so I know that's divisible by three. And forty nine. Oh, that's nice because forty nine is seven seven. So we get plus or minus seven i radical three. Again, the 7 is the pair of 7s from our factor tree. The i is the negative that was there. That's that's how that gets out there. So if it doesn't have a pair of stays. Stays that number on the inside. That's right. Yeah. All right. Let's try number 12. I threw a fraction in there. Everybody loves fractions, right? <laughs> Add 1. That's first step. Negative 2 thirds x squared is equal to 18. Multiplying by the reciprocal would be the, the right step there. Uh, if you divided by that fraction, it would be the same thing. Um, but I like doing the multiplying by reciprocal because it works out real nice here. Uh, x squared would be uh, negative 27. Just put that 18 over 1, cross cancel. Out of that. Only thing that you've got to be real careful of, if you use the calculator to do that that um, multiplication, you don't have to worry about parentheses. But if I boot multiply times negative 3 over 2 like that, I don't have to worry about parentheses. But if I do 18 divided by negative 3 over 2, I should get negative 27 as an answer. But I don't. Because if I'm going to divide by a fraction, I've got to do 18 divided by parentheses, negative uh, two-thirds. If you're doing division, yeah. yeah. You don't. You can put them in the multiplication, and it won't mess it up. So if I'm multiplying 18 times parentheses, negative three over two, 
that's not going to mess up the multiplication. It will mess up the division if you don't put them in there. So be careful of that. And that's usually only if you're dividing by a fraction or into a fraction. Just be careful of that. Okay. Break that down. Plus or minus. What's the final answer? Yeah, it's a negative 27, so there's an I there. And then a 3 left over inside. Just takes... It's a lot of all all the stuff we've been doing, just adding a negative to it is it's all that today is doing there on this part. Now, the next part is uh, where some people can tend to get confused, but I'm going to show you uh, kind of an easy way to doing this. Uh, out of the first power, what we're doing is powers of I, and the idea is that we want to simplify this as far as possible. And the powers of I are what's called a cyclic relationship, meaning that once you get to a certain point, it starts over. Okay, So it's kind of like on a racetrack, once you get to the start-finish line, you start another lap, but it's the same same course again. Okay, So the powers of I does the same thing. So I to the first power, what does uh, what is I? What's the definition for I? Square root of negative 1. Okay. That's the same thing as just plain I. I to the first power, plain I, they're the same thing, okay? I to the second power means you take the square root of negative 1 and you square it. What happens when you square a square root? It cancels out the square root. Doesn't do anything to the number underneath. It just cancels out the square root. So that I squared is actually equal to negative 1. I squared is equal to negative 1. I to the third power, well, there's several different ways to get I to the third power, but what does I to the third power mean? It means I times I times I, doesn't it? And if I just pick up two of those at a time, that could be I times I squared, right? But we just showed that I squared was actually what? Negative 1. So this could be negative I times negative 1, which is just negative I. Yeah, it gets a little confusing when you're doing this. I'm going to show you uh, as we get build up to where it starts starting over, uh, kind of what's going on there. So I to the fourth power... Uh, isn't it, wouldn't it be the same thing as I squared times I squared? And then that's going to be negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. I to the fifth power is I to the fourth times I. What's I to the fourth? 1. What's 1 times I? Plain old I. I to the sixth power is I to the fourth times I squared, which is just one times negative one, which is negative one. See how it's starting over? Look at the left hand side, we got I negative one, and then on the right hand side, we got I negative one. See, it started over already. I to the seventh power is I to the fourth times I cubed. So we know I cubed is negative I. Well, out of the seventh is negative I. Out of the eighth is the same thing as out of the fourth times out of the fourth, which is one times one, which is one. Now, I'm going to show you the, the shortcut trick to this, the way that I like to do this. The way that this is showing out here is right, but I think there's a little bit easier way. Okay, the easier way that I look at this is to simplify. A power of I. Here's the chart you need to know. I 
I squared out of the third and out of the fourth. We know I squared from our previous work there is negative one. I cubed is negative I and out of the fourth is positive one. Divide the exponent by four. So for example, I to the 23rd, I'm going to do 4 into 23, and I'm going to do it old school way, and then we'll do a uh, calculator in a second. 4 into 23. How many times does 4 go into 23? 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. Do your subtraction. What is this 3 called? I remember from long division back in elementary school. The remainder. Y'all remember doing that? Okay. What that tells us, excuse me, is that I to the 23rd power is the same thing as I cubed. And we know that I cubed is negative I. And I remember last year on the benchmark, they they had a problem that was doing this on the non-calculator portion. That's why I'm showing you how to do it this way. It's on the calculator portion. It's almost it's too easy, and they won't put it on there. I promise you, because it's too easy. But so we're dividing by four every time. The exponent gets divided by four. If the remainder is zero, then it's going to be out of the fourth power. So it's going to be one. If the remainder is 3, it's going to be I cubed. If the remainder is 2, it's going to be I squared. If the remainder is 1, it's just I. Okay. That is the keys to the kingdom as far as doing this. So let's look at the examples up here. I to the 15th power. We're going to take 15 and divide it by 4. So I guess three times, that's 12, we subtract, remainder of three. So that's going to be the same thing as I cubed, which is negative I. On the calculator, if I just type in second decimal point raised to the 15th, it simplifies it for me. It gives me negative I. That's why they're never going to ask you that question on the calculator portion of the benchmark or the uh, end of course. Nothing that easy. Okay, so we've got to be able to do this by hand. And the idea is to divide the exponent by 4 and then look at the remainder. So on number 14, it says I to the 62nd power. So I'm going to take 4 and divide it into 62. So I'll go one time, subtract. Two left over. Four will go into 22 five times. Subtract with two left over. So that's the same thing as, yes, ma'am? You're not doing that. So what this is, 5e to the negative 13 is my like, uh, scientific notation. Okay. If yours has given you back this funky thing that's uh, like an e notation, if it's giving you this, 5e negative 13 or something similar to that, and then a minus i, this means 5 times 10 to the negative 13. 
what the issue is it's an, a calculator algorithm issue uh, that is just a rounding error in your calculator when it does all the work to get that. <laughs> what does where does the decimal go when there's a negative exponent? It goes to the left, right? So we're going to move this decimal from here 13 places that way. So if I go 13 places that way, there's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12 zeros. What is that number close to? Zero. Nothing. Okay, so basically this is saying zero minus i, which is just negative i. And, and so that notation is a rounding error with the algorithm with the calculator. It doesn't happen every time. It doesn't happen to everybody's calculator. For whatever reason, it just depends on the mood of the calculator and the mood that it's in that day, or what are the other things that may be scoring that cause it to, to do that. So uh, it ends, ends up being just be that that negative i out of it, which is why one of the another reason that I try to show doing this by hand instead of with the calculator, just because that that algorithm error that can happen there. So this one has a remainder of two when we divide sixty-two by four, so that means it's like i squared means it's negative one. This is my answer there. So we're going to divide the exponent by four every time to get that to work. Last thing of the day is multiplying uh, expressions together. Okay. So the way it works is just like with variables. If you multiply x times x, that turns into x squared, right? So when we multiply i times i, it becomes i squared. Okay, so when we multiply these two together, 4 times 7 is 28. I times I is I squared, but we know I squared is what? Negative 1, which is, makes this negative 28 as a final answer. And again, your calculator can handle that. If you do 4I times 7I, It'll, it'll simplify it for you. But again, they're going to ask you this on the non-calculator portion, so you got to be able to do it without the calculator. Okay. Uh, now, number 16, we've got three things to multiply together. So we're just going to multiply the numbers in front together first. So that'd be negative 8 times negative 9 would be positive 72. I to what power? To the third, but we know that I to the third is actually negative i and negative i times 72 would be negative 72 i and again doing that uh the calculator will crank out the answer to that but you want to be able to do it by hand too number 17 they got an exponent in there so we got to remember order of operations this goes back to way back in the first unit that we did back in january uh, order of operations is a very important thing. Which one of those things gets done first, the multiplication or the exponent? Mm -hmm. So we're going to cube 2i. So that's 2 to the third power, which is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8i cubed times 5i. So that would be 40i to the fourth, right? What's i to the fourth? One, you've got to you you've got to commit to memory that little chart right there. You don't have to know any of the ones above that. You can calculate those, but you've got to commit to memory this little chart. They don't give you that as a on the reference sheet, uh, on the uh, in the course or the benchmark. So I just understand you need to commit that to memory. All right, so this is going to be just plain old forty at the end. All right, a little tougher one here with 18. We got a square root involved there and then a negative number that we're squaring. So uh, when we square I radical 3, that means I'm going to square the I and I'm going to square the square root of 3. What? I said 3 and root of 3. When I square a square root, what happens? Cancels the square root out. So it's I squared times 3. And then what happens when I square a negative number? 
it becomes a positive 64 in this case, I squared. So I'm going to multiply all that stuff together. So I squared times I squared is I to the fourth. 3 times 64. Uh, 3 times 60 is 180 plus 12. 192 I to the fourth. But we know I to the fourth is positive 1. 192 times 1 is 192. Again, you can go to the calculator, and that one's kind of complex. It's got a lot of stuff going on to it. I could type in I, square root of 3, get out of that, close the parentheses, uh, squared times parentheses, negative 8, I, close the parentheses, squared, and it cranks out the same answer. So you definitely can check these, especially for me and the quizzes and stuff like that with the calculator. But understand, you need to know how to do it right without the calculator uh, for end of course purposes and for the fact that it's much quicker to do it by hand than it is to type it in the calculator. In my opinion, it is. You just If you got good number sense out of that. All right, now, this is where we get into a little bit of uh, issue. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> with these because it's got a uh, square root with a negative inside uh, and the general rule for multiplying square roots together is what? What gets multiplied together uh, with square roots? Outside times outside, inside times inside. I know neither, this one doesn't have anything on the outside already, but that's what the rule is for multiplying square roots together. Now, if I went ahead and multiplied these together now as two negative numbers, what kind of answer would I get? A positive underneath the square root. That's not the right order of operations. Order of operations says that you've got to do exponents or parentheses, exponents, then multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. The square root is a, an exponent. It's the one half power is actually what it is. Uh, so you've got to simplify that exponent part before you do the multiplying. So we've got to simplify the square root of negative 18 and the square root of negative 10 before we do our multiplication so that we don't lose the, the imaginary or the complex number part. So let's, let's simplify the square root of negative 18. Six and three, three and two, you mean? So we've got a pair of threes, so that's going to be three I radical two. What comes out of the radical 10? Any pairs? No, so the only thing that comes out is I radical 10. Then I'm going to multiply it together. Outside stuff times outside stuff inside stuff times inside stuff. So when I multiply outside stuff together, 3i times i, be 3i squared, and then square root of 20 on the inside. Okay? What do I know about 20? It breaks down. 4 and 5, 2 and 2. So a pair of 2s can come out. That's going to be 3 times 2 times i squared and then a 5 left over. What do we know I squared turns into? Negative 1. So that's going to be negative 6 radical 5. If we had multiplied it together at the beginning... Y'all told me that it would turn it into a positive number underneath the square root. Would the I's been in, anywhere around if there was a positive under the square root? No, it had been a completely different answer. So order of operation is, is what tells us we've got to do the square root simplifying before we do anything else. If those did not have negatives on the inside of the square root, it really wouldn't matter because it works out the same. But because they're negative underneath the square root, you need to simplify those first before you do your multiplying. Uh, because if you don't, 
uh, it's going to count it wrong or get you the wrong answer. Uh, on the calculator, if you typed in the square root of negative 18 times square root of negative 10, it will not uh, get you the radical version of that, but it'll get you the decimal approximation for that, negative 6, radical 5, which is the same number as that. So you can check and make sure you got it right there. Uh, but you've got to be in that A plus B I mode with the calculator to, for it to do that. All right, let's do this last one here, and then we'll do, get practice for today. Tw negative 24 under a square root times negative 3 under a square root times negative 2 under a square root. Again, we need to do what first? Reduce the square roots first. So 24, 8, and 3. Uh, four and two, two and two is a pair of twos. It's going to be two I radical six for the first one. What does the square root of negative three turn into? I radical three, right? And then the square root of two, or negative two, excuse me, the I radical two. And then we multiply those things together. 2i times i times i would be 2i cubed. Square root of 6 times 3 times 2 be 18 times 2, or 6 times 6 is 36. What do we know about the square root of 36? It's 6. So that's going to be 2i cubed times 6, which is 12 times, what's i cubed? Negative i, so that's going to be negative 12i at the end. If I went to my calculator and punched all that stuff in, oops, get that out, get out of there. All right, so square root of symbol, negative 24, press the right arrow key to get out from under there, times square root symbol, negative 3, right arrow key to get out of there times square root symbol, negative 2, hit enter. Because I'm in that uh, A plus B I mode, it, it'll, it'll actually do that because it came out to be a nice uh, number underneath the square root there. I can check that with that. But again, not likely they're going to give you these kind of problems on the benchmark or the end of course on the calculator portion. So you got to be able to do them by hand. And uh, from all accounts, they pretty much put a, put a one or two of those on on those things, okay? So uh, practice today.